Hello and welcome back to the channel and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to create Wordle using Godot 4. So let's run the game quickly. As you can see you have typical Wordle board here with the simulated keyboard and the uh, grid to guess the words and we can input the words with the mouse and check it. Uh, one thing that is missing, as you can probably hear, is the keyboard support. I really encourage you to add uh, that feature on your own as an extension to that tutorial. So without further ado, let's start working on that. So what I have run here is the Godot engine vertical manager. As you can tell, I am using 4.3 version, but it should also work without any issues on the stable 4.2 version. So let's go ahead and create new folder, and I'm just going to browse to the right location here. Let's call this Wordle uh, tutorial, and let's click create folder. Render is set to forward as usual and version control metadata is git not that it matters so let's create and edit okay let's switch to 2d uh, this game is going to be uh, mainly uh, ui based let's start by setting up some stuff i'm going to create the main node here which I usually do. Let's call this main. Uh, let's save this, create new folder, call it scenes. And let's save it there. We will also right click on the um, on the scene and we will set as main scene right here. Uh, and then one thing I would like to do in is project settings, search for clear and find the environment. And we can set the clear color here, which is going to be, let's see, 1A1, A1B. Oh. One. Sometimes there's an issue with this a1 b that should be this dark gray color perfect so there are a few things here that we have to handle uh, let's start by handling um, the we need to display those rows where we can input our letters so let's start working on that i will start by adding margin container here so that's gonna start us on working on our ui uh, and let's make it span across the screen and in theme overrides i'm going to go to margin top and change the value to 100. okay then what we need is a vbox container Or do we really? Uh, basically, no, we can just add a center container. Uh, and in that center container, what we need is to basically leave it as is and set it to center and now we can start adding our rows so let's find uh this is the v box container i'm going to call this rows and then we will start working on a singular row which is going to be Eight box container for horizontal alignment let's call this row so in that row 
we will add a script and what we will do is wait do we need a script for that not really what we need is to actually let's save it as a separate scene so let's go save branch as a scene go to scene and save this as a row and let's open that one up and inside of it we will we will add the uh, letter panels and each of this is going to be a panel let's call this letter tile uh, and we will make each also being a separate scene so sage branch as a scene and now you can um, basically see how all this is being structured so we have letter tiles that combine create a scene and then uh, each uh, each row is then contained in a grid for our letters so let's go into letter tile and what we will need is add a label it's going to display our letter here okay so let's start working on that for our letter tile we'll change the layout set set the custom minimum size to be 40 and 40 it's gonna be one thing and then another very important thing is if we run the wardrobe game uh, let's do agile you can see that each letter tile has separate state like maybe the letter is wrong or maybe it is right but on the wrong position or maybe the letter is in the right position and is correct so to handle that uh, i am going to add enums so let's go to project setting and we'll add an auto loading script let's call this enums and let's add it we'll create new folder called this scripts and create and this is going to be global variable perfect and let's open it up uh, can we just okay let's add a letter title script first the enums won't put up, up for any reason but oh now and now we can access enums perfect so let's get rid of that and in enums we'll create an enum representing the state of of our tile it's going to be either empty either incorrect correct by the wrong placement or correct right placement perfect so we have that and we can use that in our letter tile so let's get working on that it extends the um, panel but it's a letter tile and what we need to have is a separate theme variation for each state so let's go to our letter tile go to theme and create new theme and let's also save it to so move it up and i'm going to create new folder called this themes and I'm going to change the extension to be theme and say that this is letter. 
and now we need to create different type variation based on uh, what type of state we would like to represent for the file so let's start by going to type here where it says none and press add and we will add a new type uh, which is going to start with empty and even though though it nothing shows here in the list this is going to be correct so let's add that and here in the base type here when you have that branch and screwdriver we can choose the base type and we will add panel because that's going to be um, type variation for a panel node and then in panel we can create new style box so here next to the branch and screwdriver you can just click plus and say new style box flat and then click on it to open it and then we have a background color and in case of that what we will do is we'll just take the alpha and get it back to zero so that's one type done right and you can see it being here in our theme okay um let's see what else we need to do we need to add another uh theme type variation and this is going to be correct right placement and I'm going to use a snake case, snake case here. So basically you can think of those theme type variations as a classes. So you'd like your UI to look different based on some type of state change or variable. And again, we're going to do pretty much the same. So go to base type, find a panel, go to the style box, create new and choose new style box flat. And this time we'll have a color here and I'm just going to copy the hex for it. Oops. It did not copy correctly. Let's try again. Okay, so that should be this nice greenish color. Okay, so we have that. Uh, next one. Correct, wrong, placement. Um, again base type is a panel so we inherit, inherit everything from that type new style box flat and this time the color should be yellowish let's see i did not copy it correctly Damn it. Okay, this is C9B458. C9B45. Damn it. C9B458. Okay, we're good here. So this is our uh this is our yellowish color. Then what we need is incorrect so let's add another team type okay and the color for that one is dark gray 3a3a3c
3A, 3A, 3C. Just like dark gray. Perfect. And the last one, I believe, should be something called letter available. And we'll basically apply the very same theme we're creating here to the keyboard. So let's create that letter available. Again, it's going to extend the, oh, this time it's going to extend the button because it's going to be, even though it's the same theme and we're creating the theme type variations for the, uh, for the panels, we can, we'll reuse that for the keyboard button keyboard button and here you can see all the states that we care about and we'll only um, add something to the normal state which is going to be style box flat and the color that we need is actually 818384 so 818384 eight four okay perfect so this sets up the colors in our case let's go here to 2d have a label mm, let's see what we need to overwrite for for the label um let's see on the layout do we need anything? Oh, we need the layout transform size to be 40 and 40. So that 40 and 40. So it matches and we need to set the alignment to center. Cent center. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do we need to change the font size? I don't think so. So yeah, this is basically our uh, letter tile. And then we can go and code everything that we need here. So first is gonna be the state to theme variation array, which is going to map our enum that we created here. Uh, to the uh, name of the theme type variations and enum of this type basically uh, is a numeric type which says that the first type is zero the next one is one two three so this can be easily mapped onto the uh, array indexes so that I can just say here the first one is empty, second one is it's incorrect, next one is correct, wrong placement, next one is correct, right placement. Okay, we also have a letter value here, so what letter should we uh, provide to our label? And let's get the reference to the label itself, uh, which is going to be here. Okay, and then we'll do export var letter string, and we'll use the getter and setter to basically do some stuff whenever the letter is being set. So if we get, we'll just return the letter value and when we set new value we'll say letter value is equal to value and also if label is not null we'll say that label text is equal to value to upper perfect so whenever we change the letter for that letter type, we also update the. Uh, we will also update the um, the value in the label. Something is wrong here. 
unexpected indent. Why? It should be correct. Oh, uh, if you're if you're writing getters and setters here, you need to add the the semicolon. Okay, and then we also need to provide ability to change the state of that one. And of course, all should start with the state being empty. And then we'll just say set tile state. And whenever we set a state, and this also could be handled with a getter and setter here, right? But here we'll handle it as a function just because theme type variation is equal and here what is cool is we can use team state to team variation and take from the state as i mentioned this enum can be converted easily to numeric value so that we can read the the index from here okay uh, with that set and done, what we also need is ready function. It's going to be really simple here. So, theme type variation is going to be set to state, theme variation state, and then label text is equal to empty if, oops, label text is equal to empty string if state is equal to enums state empty else it should be set to letter and now we can test this in our main by simply saying instantiate tags in letter here and now we can see that we can provide a letter here and choose a state for it so let's try and run it. And here we can see that uh, we have that letter and it's being set to a cor correct theme type. Let's try this again. Say so this is incorrect. And let's run this again. Yes, it is incorrect. And then correct, right? And now it's green. So yeah. Now we have handled the uh, letter tile. With our letter tile finished, now we can set up our row. It's going to be very, very simple. What we need to do is just duplicate um, our letter tile five times. And yeah, I believe that's going to be it if we look into to the view here we can see the whole row um let me see i believe one thing that there might be missing is uh, let's get rid of that and let's run our game again yeah it's nothing is really visible here right because what we need to do is we need to add the border to our letter tile. So let's see how we can achieve this. Okay, so basically what we can do is go to letter tile and find the empty, expand the styles find the styles box, style box flat, you can search the border width, and I believe the value that I'm using here is just one pixel. And also, do we need corner radius here? 
now we can leave it as is and with that drawing the main now yeah we can see the row for our game that we need perfect so um now it's time to decide how many rows do we get and i believe that you get five or six let's do five in our case so uh, now if we run it we are getting five rows to input everything that we need here perfect so these are our rows set up in the um, center of the screen and i believe that the next step for us is going to be working on the keyboard so yeah let's start doing that in the next section okay setting up the keyboard we'll start by creating new scene and that's going to be uh let's see vbox container i will call this keyboard and i will save it as a separate scene in scenes so save uh, and let's see what we need to actually get going here we need three uh eight box container each for um each row of the keyboard keys and then what we will need is a keyboard button so that's also gonna be a separate scene so let's try doing that so let's go to scene new scene let's find a button here uh, and let's just add something in here and start working on it so let's find the custom minimum size and the value i'm using here is 43 by 58 um let's call this keyboard button and save um the next thing that i would like to so we have that set uh, the next thing is of course going to be the styling for that so let's find a theme and let's start working on that uh, so we will create a new theme here actually and what we will need to do is add all of the types that we need so first one is going to be correct right placement and the base type is going to be button of course and then in here what we have is we need to basically override everything in here so let's try and create new sidebox flat and let's find the color that we need and this is let me see 00b939 so let's get rid of that 00b 939 okay nice greenish color and that should be it not sure whether we need to override all of these um next one we name correct wrong placement so basically we repeat the work we did for for the um letter tiles 
add this the base is bottom and new starbucks flat and then the color we need is here okay again nice yellow like color then we need letter available again these theme type variation variations are like different states of your ui right that has that have i don't know different font sizes different colors different backgrounds you can think of those as uh, css classes if you know css um let's overwrite that and the color is here and we should be able to set it perfect and then the last one is going to be used new sidebox flat and this is another dark grayish color that we have perfect um yeah i believe that's the most of it when it comes to setting up stuff for our uh, wonderful uh wonderful keyboard buttons let's just check this we have correct right placement, correct wrong placement, letter available and used. Perfect. With all of that set, we can start coding. So let's go to keyboard button and add a new script. Move it to scripts folder. and move to script and we can start coding so let's start by adding the class name keyboard button and export letter and we will also export the state which is the same enums state type and we will say that it's enums state and starts as an empty. We'll also create the state to team variation here. So letter is either available, available when the state is empty, it might be used, it might have correct. It might be correct, but the placement might be wrong. And the last one is correct with the right placement. Okay. Um, and here we'll do a few things. Um, let's see. Already, we will first assign the name of the node to be the letter and this is useful for ui debugging we set the theme type variation to be of state theme type variation from state we'll say that the text of the button is set to letter and we'll also allow setting new state If new state is equal to enums state incorrect, we will disable the button. If also if state is not equal to enums state correct right placement, 
we'll reassign the new state. We're saying the set the team type variation to state to team variation at state. So if we know that the state is correct with the correct placement, there's no need to do any other modification. If it's not, then let's reassign new state. Okay. That should be it for the keyboard button. Uh, let's see whether this works and how it behaves. So let's go to main, to D, and I will add child, I will instantiate child node keyboard button. I'll just move it here and let's start playing with it. Let's set the letter to B and let's run our game. We have it, we can see that it can be clicked and in remote, we will see that the, um, there is correct name to it. Let's try changing the states. Uh, you can see that it still can be highlighted, uh, but this is, this is only on ready. So this is fine. Let's see correct wrong placement. Okay, and for any reason, I don't think the state is being set correctly on ready. So let's see what's that about. Okay, so we have a few things to fix in our keyboard button. Actually, what we need is we need to add all of those styles here. Uh, so what can we do? We can save this style box flat. So save us. Let's go to themes and let's say this is, um, let's see, this is correct right placement. Style box, let's save it. And we can basically apply it everywhere here. So let's quick load. Okay, and maybe let's try running it now. So correct right placement and And it seems like it's working, kind of. But it should be a little bit different. Oh, it's the... Uh, is a wrong one, right? This is... Um, this should be correct. Right placement. So let's save us. Let's overwrite that. Yes. Okay. And it's still incorrect. Okay. Let's just copy the color here. Okay, now it should be green and now it's green. Okay, and we have to do the same for other states. So correct wrong placement. Uh, what was the color for that? Correct wrong placement. This is A, this is A, 7A. One zero zero. A seven seven A one zero zero. Okay, let's save this. This is going to be here and the style box correct, wrong, placement, style box, and hit save. 
So this is here and I can see correct wrong placement. I wonder whether that's going to work. Oh, we need to change it in main to correct wrong placement. No, okay. So let's override that too. So this, 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 and this. And let's just do quick load. Okay, now it's good to go. Perfect. Uh, we're almost there. Okay, so the next style is, let's see, letter available and that should also override the button. Okay. And let's do a new style box. Let's save this at uh, as letter available. Um, let's apply it like everywhere. Okay, perfect. And now, uh, how should we style it? It should be just nice gray, 8183. Oh, eight four eight one eight three eight four okay uh let's see let's go back to main keyboard and that's gonna be empty for the letter available and it is and then for the used or incorrect right so the last thing that we need to set up, thankfully, let's see, used, uh, also has to override the button. And then, let's do just new Cybox flat. Let's save this as used style box loaded everywhere okay and we have that going and the color for the use should be 20201f 202, damn it, 201F. Perfect. And testing it here for the used, let's see. Yeah, it, this is dark and this is light gray, right? Right, perfect. So we have that set up and now our keyboard button should be working so the next thing to do is to write the keyboard controller yeah and set up rest of our keyboard in this section we will start working on our uh basically whole game controller but first thing that we have to attend to is 
how to get the word for our player to guess and we could just have like a single static word here but instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new empty node so a child node by an empty node and let's call this word pool and let's add a script here and you will find uh, a link to the github repository in the description so that you can basically copy the code of that um, node but what i have here is an array of basically most of the english words that are five letters long and uh what i did is i just copy uh, those words this array from the internet i search for something like i don't know oh let's try all words for wordle yeah so i just basically was smart enough to write a script that will parse all of that into an array okay so we have that so we can create last name word pool here and i can create a simple function get random word that will call words and pick random and that's all we need for that um yeah and again you can find this in the repository the link is in the description below Okay, so with that, um, I am going to, let's see, uh, this is our keyboard. Oh, we also have to set up the whole keyboard, right? So, um, let's start by going here and adding essentiating a child this is going to be keyboard button and let's start just adding those so this is to the hbox container so we need uh let's see one for the q right and then q w e r d y u i o p and then we can just assign everything here so the letter is w and i could also change the name here or should i oh we might as well And then we have E. R. D. Y. U. I. O. D. And let's check that.
and B. Perfect. Then the second row, we have A, S, D, F, G, H, J, K, L. Okay, and the third row, let's see what we need here is to change the alignment to center. This and then this. Okay, and the last one is Z. Um, X uh, let's see C V B and M so this is C Okay, and now we have to assign the proper letters. Okay, perfect. Uh, what we are missing though are two special buttons um, that we would like to handle. Um, the enter button and the uh, the uh, backspace button. So basically we can add a button here move it here and i think i will make it into a separate scene so let's save branch as scene let's call this special button we'll call this one enter say enter and let's see, or let's provide few values here. So the layout, the size is 80 by 58. Okay. Um, and what I will do is I will overwrite some themes. So in styles, we will overwrite the the focus let's see um will we we want to override the focus well yeah we can okay so new sidebox flat the color i believe is 818 we Eight four, which is slightly darker than the corner radius is set to four pixels everywhere. OK, 
Okay. That's pretty much it. Let's actually save it. Call this bottom style box. Because we can reuse it. And also on hover, let's load the very same style box. Okay, let's see. Then we need another um, special button. And for that, we will need an icon. So let's create new folder. Call this assets. And what you will find in the repository is going to be an icon for the backspace. Let me just grab it and take it here and move it to assets. Perfect. And now we need to create that backspace button. It is going to be rather simple because will do is I will add a child node and call this panel and uh, the panel is going to have a child which is going to be a texture button and now we can start changing stuff at least a little bit so the texture button we need to set the texture for it Let's see, I believe this is going to be... Let's start by changing the layout to match everything else. 80 by 58, so the same as our uh, enter button. Um, this does not matter. And then, of course, in textures, we need to provide the backspace PNG. So let's see here and here. Well, basically, the normal should be enough if I remember that correctly. Uh, do we need anything else here? Oh, yeah. For our button panel, we can find theme override styles. And you can load that button style box here. So is this correct? It would seem so. Um, this is a keyboard button, but now let's try and instantiate the whole keyboard here. And now that I look at it, we probably need a VBUX container here after all. Let's move that to the center. And here we'll also instantiate the, the keyboard. And you can see already that it's not looking correct. But if we set the horizontal alignment to center, it should be good. One thing I would like to change is to add some separation here. So in theme override separation, we can add a value, I don't know, 32. Okay, let's run this. Um, one thing that is not looking good is the styling of the buttons. So let's check that. Let's remove that node. Bring back to our keyboard. This should be good. And this too. See, this is hover. Focus. Oh, we need, of course, we need normal here. Let's run it now. Okay, this is way better. 
for our panels something seems like it's not working and i can see that it's not being stretched properly so let's see probably the problem is the layout uh, yeah it of course has to match the um size here so 80 by 58 and now we have our keyboard set up properly okay so um that's it when it comes to to setting up the keyboard uh the next part is of course sending the press signals um from our keyboard to wherever we'd like to send those so we will handle that in the next section Okay, so in this section, we'll start uh, by setting up our uh, our rose controller, our game controller, and I'm gonna add a script here on the rose. You might also add it on the main. That's also gonna be fine. It's really up to you. Only basically only the references to some notes are gonna be different. Um, so let's see, I, I'm going to add a script here, move it to scripts and I'm going to call this gross controller, but basically this is like our God script that, that controls all of the game. The first thing that we need to do beside the fact that we will give it a class name is to set up the functions that we'd like to connect to when uh, the keyboard press uh, is coming in. So to do that, uh, what I would like to do is uh, go to keyboard and then we'll add do we need to add those into the group? Um, no, I don't think that we do. So we can just start setting it up and we'll be able to set up the proper signals with proper, uh, with proper um, letter bytes. So, Um, yeah, let's do this. So from each we'll go to note and maybe we'll add a keyboard script here. So let's add a keyboard script, create and say class name keyboard. Okay keyboard then we can start connecting basically we have to do it bit by bit to provide the correct uh, signals so let's connect um, and I don't want to say on Q pressed but on keyboard button pressed and if we click advanced we can add an extra call argument i'm going to change it to string and add and i will bind the queue here um or even small queue that should create a function i'm going to change it to state letter and let's see where this triggers correctly from the code so we'll just print it Press play and it seems not. Let's see. Did I not press something? Uh, let's pick. On keyboard button pressed. 
extra call argument should be Q connect. Now it's connected. I do not know what happened there. Let's press. Yeah, now we can read that press. Perfect. So basically now it's going to be a boring part where we set everything up correctly. Okay, so let's specify that this is a string and let's try connecting the W here. So pick, and as you can see what I did, uh, I checked off compatible methods only. I don't know why this is being shown as incompatible, but this is W connect and that should work q w yes so basically uh we'll repeat all of that i will speed up this part of the video Perfect. So that should be all of the letters connected. Okay, and I think we did not miss any. So let's um, remit the signal from here. And we also need the um, the signals from the backspace press and enter press. Let's connect to these. So. That's going to be on backspace button rest. And here we will get enter press. Okay, and also we need to add all of these to a new group. So that's going to be a scene group. Uh, and I'm just going to call this keyboard. So for all of these, can we just... No, we have to do it one by one. Okay. So the enter and the panel, the texture button 
they do not have to belong to the keyboard because they are not getting uh, validated or have their team type variation changed. Okay, and with this setup, we can finally go back to main, to rows, and connect the signals from the keyboard to our rows controller. So rows, that one, um, then enter pressed and letter pressed. Okay, and let's check that real quick. Mm, this is backspace. This one is enter. And this one is just letter. Okay, let's quickly check back the keyboard. This looks good, so let's try this. Enter, backspace, and rest is the letter. Okay, yeah, so now we have connection from the keyboard to the ropes controller, and in the next section, we will finally start working on it. Okay. So this is the biggest part of our game. And this is the Rose controller. So let's start by defining the words word to guess. We're gonna start it as an empty, but already we'll get the reference to word pool. So let's access as a unique name. And let's get the reference for that here. And let's just say word to guess is equal to word pool uh, get random word. So this is the word that our user has to guess. Then we'll need a few other references here. So already rows which is of type of ri of h box container and that's gonna be just references to all of our rows Okay, what else do we need? We will need the reference to our keyboard. So let's also access as unique name. Um, and that's good enough for now. Okay, we'll need to track where are we on our board? So we need to know what row are we filling in and what column are we filling in? So let's get active row index set to zero and then active letter index and we'll set this to minus one because this is like our cursor location. So we have five of these. This is basically the pointer to the currently active or filled in column. So currently we are like here, minus one, because we didn't fill in anything. And as we fill the first letter here, for example, with A, we'll set that active index to zero. Okay. Mm. We'll also need to track is the row that we're currently working on field. 
set this to false oh we will also need to get the reference to le letters as an array and to letter tiles okay so let's start working by working on keyboard letter pressed when we uh when we press a letter we have to do some checks if active letter index is less than four we'll say that active letter index is equal plus one and um then if active letter index is less or equal or we'll say rows need to get active row index we have that defined right yes we do okay get child active letter index letter is equal to letter so basically what we're doing is we're searching our grid to find the letter tile to be filled in let's see whether that works okay but then yeah we are able to change the last letter which is also good i want to have that feature in so this is how we feel our grid which is perfect then let's handle the backspace being pressed we should uh, remove the word and push us forward so backspace if active letter index is greater than or equal zero we will erase the row so active row index get child active letter index um letter is equal to empty string and if active letter index is uh do we need that check again no we need to set the active letter index minus equals one okay let's see about that so i am providing something here and then i remove and then i start filling in again and then i'm moving everything and i can start again perfect so these two functionalities are uh, being handled and then the biggest thing that we have to do is to um start working working on our enter press and this is like the whole validation process so um basically well we can start working on it here uh, one thing that i would like to add is some kind of validation alert uh, so let's go to our 2d and let me see let's get rid of that and pop that in okay so <laughs> let's just add a panel mm. yes let's add a panel we'll call that panel validation alert Uh, and we'll add a label here. Okay. And let's see about styling on that beautiful thing. So first is the size. Mm, let's remove that. So layout and 200 by 55 and then 
him of right styles we'll do new style box flat and we can leave it at as it is uh, what I would like to do is align it to center and move it down just a tiny bit let's see maybe like right here and here we have a label let's see we will go through a validation process with um with our reward that we input so the one problem is that somebody might want to validate his word uh, when not all redder letters are filled. Somebody might press enter here. And then I would like to say not enough letters, right? The other more complex problem that we might encounter is that somebody might input letters that are not really a word. So what, for example, is ASDEP? Like, what we could do, and that would be the simplest thing, is to validate that against the words we have in our array. Uh, and I believe, I believe that should be good enough in our case. So we have two things to basically do and validate. Um, and that should happen on enter and after that we should assign the proper state. So not in enough letters. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so one thing that I am seeing is this should be aligned to center and center. And the other thing I would like to override is the color, set so the font color to be black because it's more visible here. Okay. So we have the, um, we have the alert here and I will hide it for now. And I will also make it accessible as a unique name. Then I can go to my rows controller and also say we need a reference for that. Oops. Drop it here. Perfect. So what really should happen on enter? First thing we should validate the length. So is length valid and we will validate right. and this function doesn't exist and I am calling it with a wait because we will create a timer here do we yeah we can create a timer um so let's see uh validate length this is going to be rather simple so function uh validate length if active letter index is equal to or simply return true because that's the indicator of the correct length. Uh, otherwise, what we'll do is we'll create, we'll call the validation alert and we'll call show with text. So given that, maybe we don't even need to await here because what we can do is be smart about it and save branch as a scene move it to a separate scene open it up and we will just add a timer here and we will also add a script uh, 
Okay. And we'll just create one function. We'll get the reference to the label. We'll call a function show with text. Um, we'll do text as a string. Assign it. And we'll call show. Make sure that it's hidden on the ready. And then we will also get a reference to a timer. So timer start. And let's see. Uh, wait time. This is going to be one shot. Wait time is going to be 2.5 seconds. And on timeout, we'll create uh, on timer timeout function and just call hide again. Super simple. And that's going to handle our timer, our uh, timer, our validation alert, sorry, being displayed. So given the fact that we have all of that, go back to our Rose controller. We have the reference to validation alert, and I can just say not enough letters. Um, and then basically we can just return false because the length of the word wasn't valid. So let's try this now. I try to validate and not enough letters and it should hide and we should be able to continue. Perfect. So the next step for our validation. Um, let's see. If is length invalid is not true, simply return because there's nothing else to do. Otherwise, there's um, another step, which is checking uh, the word, whether it is correct at all. So you can send that, say that letter tiles are rows from active row index. I can call get children. And then say that the letters that we have um, currently are letter tiles. And I can map through this because that's an array. And for each return, see letter. Right? So this is just an array, and then we map through it to obtain the letter property, which we defined here. So going back to our controller, let's let's just try this. Mm. Run project. Yeah, so here you here we get the array, and to turn that uh, array of letters into a word, I can just say, and I can get an empty string here and just join letters, and that should turn that array into a single string representing our word. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, and we have our word there. Perfect. So we need to check whether this word is in our word pool array. So let's see. Check word. Our word is a string and this returns bool. 
um, what we need to do is, oh no, that's not the syntax, I believe. That's the syntax. Um, return words. See, is this include, uh, how do you say this? Contain include um find should we have like include here nah it's it's different language it should be s okay perfect um, so with that, I can just go here and say, um, if word pool check word word to check, If that's true, print word exists, else print word not found. Let's try this. Let's see. Hey, and we should get word not found, but word agile. We still get word not found. Uh, let's see. Open. Still word not found. Okay. Oh, and I know why. Because here everything is uppercased. So we need to do to upper. And try this now. Word exists, but if we do word not found, perfect. So with that, I can say in case of word not found, we'll say validation alert show with text word does not exist. Let's try this. Perfect. And in the other case, we should um, we should basically figure out what to do. I mean, we should start coloring our tiles and start coloring our uh, our keyboard button. But we'll do that in the next section. The next step is to paint our keyboard and our um, letter ties with a correct state and color. So basically here uh, we will do a function and let's call this let's call this on word valid on yeah on word valid and we can even pass um word to check and we can pass letters here okay which is the reference to letter tiles so let's write this on word valid work to check and this is going to be a string and letters is an array of a letter tile okay so 
what we will need to get is some kind of validation result here. Um, so let's do validation uh, result and yeah, we will do validate word uh, where we will pass the letters oh this is hmm. let me think on the word validated what do we really need here letters Okay, that should be correct. Letters. So pass that down here. Let's first start by obtaining the validation result. Okay, this should be good and we can validate the reward. Let's start by creating the validation results and that's going to be an array of enums state starting as an empty array. Um, and each, we know what it, it should return, it should return array of enums state perfect so here basically we'll get a structure that will describe how to change um how to change uh the theme type of every single letter in a row so for i in letters let's get the current letter Mm. Oh, we need to get the size. If word to word to check to upper. So first we need to check whether word that you are checking has that letter has current letter to upper that should be a string okay uh, we need to figure out whether the uh, the letter is in the correct place in a word. So letter index in word is word to check find an parent letter, which is gonna return the index. And then if letter index in word is equal to I, which is the index of the current letter, we can say validation results append enums state correct right placement. So the word, the letter is in a word and it's in the correct index. Else we know that we can append to validation results enums state correct wrong placement else if the word does not contain the letter validation results um, validation results append enums state incorrect and in the end 
return the validation array. Okay, let's see. Layers of I. Mm, so this type is incorrect. Um, oh, basically, what we need here then is letters, not letter types. Yes, this should be an array of string. And this also should be an array of string. And now we basically don't need that. Perfect. So let's print these validation results. We should get an array of numbers. So let's see. Agile. Um, let's see, word to check. This should be a string, and this should also be a string. The array of argument 2 array doesn't have the same element. So letters, I know that this is array of string, and that might be a slight quirk with the uh, Godot um, typing system. So maybe we'll have to drop the types for it to work. Yeah. Okay. Let's get rid of that and of that. No, well, the Godot typing system isn't perfect, but what can you do? Mm. Let's try this now. Okay, yeah. Now you can see it's working and um we can see that we get agile and the word to guess if we go to remote and go to let's see here word to guess is phony so yeah we miss all of the letters try this again just to show you that it is correctly validating Again, nothing there. Come on. Free, 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 free. And the word is lunch. So this is incorrect because E should be there. Right? Okay, let's check this. Let's print the back word check. Let's print the back letters. Okay, agile. And the word to check is also agile. Am I passing the word wrong thing? Wrong thing. Yes, because we should pass here word to guess. That's the issue. Yeah, now it's better. Okay, now it makes sense. So we passed wrong variable here. Okay, so we have the validation results. Perfect. And uh, given the fact that we know the results now, we can start setting things up. Uh, so, for I uh, in letter tiles size, we'll do letter tiles at I set tile state validation result at i okay let's see about that one okay yeah now you can see them changing and everything uh 
being ready to work. And then we need to look back to our keyboard to set the proper state for our keyboard things. So I can just say mm, keyboard. Uh, what do we have there? Oh, we need to write a function for it here. Okay. So going back to our keyboard, um, let's say on letters validated, we'll get use letters here and validation result. I'm going to say the keys. So that's why we added that group here and added every single key to that keyboard group so that I can access all of the keyboard keys at once. Get three, get nodes and group. The group name is keyboard. Um, as array, we can cast it to keyboard button. And then I can say for i in is size or hmm, let's say for key in keys let's see whether we have the use letter index there hmm, find keys find key name to lower use letter index sorry use letters and if use letter index is equal to not equal to minus one e set state validation result from used letter index okay so basically what we're doing here is we're um, iterating over all of the keys and we find if uh, in the used letters so the user the letters that user specified in given row uh, given uh, key is and if it is we set it to validation result um, index right so that should basically paint our keyboard with the proper states so going back to rows controller you can say um, how did we name this on letter validated it should be on letters validated Okay, so go back here on letters validated. And what we would like to pass here is the array of letters. So let's see, um, I believe that letters and we need validation result here. And that should be called once, not in the loop. Let's try this again. Perfect. Hey, we have pretty much everything running. Uh, the only the only thing that we need to know now is whether the user wins the game or loses the game, and we'll handle that in the last section so this is going to be the last section of our tutorial where we will display the winning or losing ui and will allow to advance the to the next row um so let's see on word validated what should we do we should decide whether user wins or loses the game 
So let's create on win function. And on lose function. Okay. So what would be the indicator of us winning? Basically, if every single entry in the validation results array states that uh, their letter is correct and the placement is correct, then we won. Mm, oh, not here. Um, rather, we will handle that naturally where we have access to validation result. So all, let's create inline function here. Um, result, so R for short, is equal to enums state correct right placement. In this case, we win. Else, but advance the row and reset the letter index. So active row index equals plus equals one. So next row and reset the letter index to the starting one, which in our case is minus one. And then if active row index is equal to rows size, call on loose so yeah let's test this so I will input the word first and now I should be inputting to the next so let's try uh, I will have to do it right we just have to. Oh, word does okay. Mm, sorry for that. I will be demonetized. Um, I have no idea. Like. I don't know. sense okay um, minor that should exist right or does not exist really let me check that Does okay, interesting. But uh, let's check the winning state by simply saying, um, <laughs> we could go to remote and then just find the word we're looking for here and here. And in the inspector, we're looking for cargo. Okay, so let's do. Uh, live okay and then let's do our go or green and we win perfect okay uh, so we should assume that we are also able to lose but I'm not going to test that because I don't know enough of English words so going back to the rows controller we have on win and let's just add the simplest possible um ui for that so let's create scene new scene and we'll use um, we'll use color rect for that 
and I will call this results UI. Let's save this, save this as a scene. And let's see what we will need here. This is going to be really as simple as possible. So first things first, let's make it span across the whole screen. And let's change the color because it's too bright. Okay. Now what we need, we need a center container. Also, span the whole scene. Then let's add a panel in the middle. Mm, and for that panel, we will set the um, custom minimum size to be 300 and 300. And let's change the theme override and add a new style. So expand that. And what I want to do here is set the border width to one, or maybe even four. Let's go crazy. Let's set the border color to be black. Okay. Corner radius, why not? Okay, and we have that going on. And then let's slap a V box container here. Make it spawn on the whole panel. And let's add a few things here. It's going to be super simple. Let's add label three times. And let's add a button. Okay, let's say play again here. Um, let's see. Do we need to just no? Let's just center it. Okay, this label should say it. word to guess. Then this one, for example, Agile, and we will center it out and override, I think, the size of the font. Let's see. Let's make it green. dark green and then the font size should be 32 so a little bit bigger make that one a little bit smaller mm, I believe 12 okay and then for example here Let's say something like you have one in four moves, which is perfect, but this has to be centered and I'll play again. And that's basically all that we need here. Um, maybe we could make the panel slightly darker color. And what I want to achieve here is I want my color rec to be uh, a little bit transparent. So let's actually add the script here. And let's start working on it. Okay, 
let's get rid of well let's not get let's get rid of the process and let's say class name results ui to export the variable here export win color type color export blues color of type color and let's get references to um let's call this word label and let's call this results label and both can be accessed as a unique name okay so already we just hide it that's simple one moving on uh, we should handle the button press which is going to be very very simple we'll just reload everything so get ring reload current scene and then we'll add a function show results uh, as the user one the word that we were guessing and number of moves which is going to be int okay uh, so first we I would like to make the color semi-transparent so let's decide which color are we using uh, for win and for lose so what should be the color of the color rect it should be win color if has one else it should be lose color let's say uh we want the color with alpha right now and we can even do like export our uh alpha how do you call this alpha factor something like this gonna be float and 0.4 so we can do color clear color and I can apply the alpha here so alpha factor and I can say that word label so let's get the references to our notes and the results label uh, word um, word label text is equal to word and we can also change the font color so word label add theme color override for the font color and set it to clear color and decide what should we display for the result so First, we need to differentiate whether this is plural or singular. Move if number of moves is equal to one, else this is, of course, moves. And result table text, um, we'll say you have one in class cast a string number of moves plus space plus moves string if has one else you have lost okay, this is pretty long line but nevertheless it should be correct so here we just decide what to display the results label if we win and if we lose if we lose of course you have lost otherwise we let the user know how many moves he took and this is just you know he already knows but this is just like a summary then we say the color is equal to color with alpha and we say show 
and that should be pretty much it so let's go back to main and let's instantiate our results UI here so click on it we can decide of the wing color and loose color of course they should be like green maybe light green and and red so let's move that here okay and then we need to use it in our rows controller so let's obtain a reference to that not here but here um, and we can access as unique name just because it looks better okay, and the last thing for us to do is actually to uh, use our results UI so on win we will say results UI show results through word guess active row index plus one and then on loose we will say results UI show results false word to guess and the number can be minus one also the last thing i would like to do is to disconnect the keyboard signal so that user cannot longer um like press on the keyboard letters after he won so disconnect keyboard signals and let's see Backspace pressed. Disconnect on backspace pressed, and here we are passing reference to the function keyboard. Enter pressed. Disconnect on keyboard. Enter pressed and keyboard letter pressed disconnect on keyboard letter pressed that should work uh, let's see if i'm correct let's go with agile and let's check the word that we should guess right now in the in the remote And the word should be digit. So let's try the digit, and it should show us the UI. And it did not. Okay. Why? Let's start maybe by showing this. Oh, this is not showing at all. Okay. Why? Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. I did not change anything, but it looks like it's working. So let's see. <clears throat> the word to guess is egret i don't know what that means but egret oh so the validation with the same letter is not working
let's see. Show. Yeah, now it works. Okay, so the one issue here is that if we have le ripped letters, uh, we might have a problem here, but we should also disconnect keyboard signals here and disconnect keyboard signals here. So let's try and let's see where to guess. Let's set it to Egret. Come on. And let's check our validation results. Free, free to free. Okay. Why? Validate the word. Find and it will. That's a problem, right? Because return the index on the first case insensitive. Mm hmm. And what about find? Of the first occurrence. That's the problem. So let's real quick fix the issue where we have repeated repeated letter if the very same word. So what we could do is just um, move the let uh, find to the index so I could say letter index in word is equal to word check take the current letter again by starting from I index and now if letter index in word is equal to I validation results append Anom state correct right placement else do this um not work check but work check find that and that should handle the case of aggret yeah, and it should still work for the other words. So this is words pool get random word. Let's see. Touch. Okay. Mm. Let's see what can we I can go with agile for more letters um let's see sif is that a word okay that's another word uh let's see what the word is three okay that should be pretty easy Let's get rid of this. And we have repeated letter here again. Okay. Yeah. So basically, uh, that's it. That's how can you get a Wordle in Godot 4. So yeah, thank you for that. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.